Colin had a problem and a microphone to spare. Thomas took it up and so the podcast went to air. For weeks and months they trolled through every single DVD. They've unwrapped all the ones they can and now they're cellulose free. Now they're cellulose free. Hello dear listener and welcome to Cellulose Free. My name is Colin and with me as always is my fellow film watcher, compadre and son, Thomas. Hi, hello. What have you been up to? Um, well, not, not a lot. Um, just sort of, just sort of waiting for things to, to happen really at the moment. <laughs> so You're in, wait, waiting for Godot. In, in between things that are happening at the moment. So on Friday, the nominations get announced for um, the election. And so I'm going to do up a, a thing about that. Uh, we're, we're already fairly clear as oh, to yeah. who, yeah. like on the ABC web, website, it's got a list of names where you can yeah. look up everyone yeah. except for <laughs> the person who's running for the Liberal Democrats. Mm. There, there's, I googled that person and couldn't find anything. So We have at least eight candidates in the seat, which yes. is more than the five at the last election. Yep. yep. Um, how many of them are going to get in? Exactly one. Which one? I know exactly which one. It's going to be the Labour candidate. It is going to be the Labour candidate, which is why I'll be voting for the Monster Raving Looney Party, mm. just to <laughs> <laughs> um, have some fun. I rewatched the first season of Russian Doll in preparation for the second season of Russian Doll that came out a couple of hours ago. Uh, but that I haven't seen because I was too busy watching Moon Knight and then doing this podcast. Moon Knight. The Marvel show. Oh, okay. That's on now, isn't it? Mm, it is. How many episodes is that into? Uh, four into a six-episode run. Wow, we're, we're doing well as a family yeah. watching that. It's not. It's It's all right. Doesn't seem to have a lot of connection to anything else that's going on in that universe. Good. But, good. You know. I think that's a good thing. So, yeah, once once we wrap up recording here, I'll be watching the second season of Russian Doll for the next four, five hours. So there is only one doll. Usually with <laughs> Russian dolls, you, you sort of take off the head and there's another Russian doll inside. No? Anyway. <laughs> okay. I should uh, point out also, just for fun... We're recording this episode naked. <laughs> what? I actually have more layers on than <laughs> usual. <laughs> um, oh, dear. And then this time next week, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe finally arrives thematically on April 27th because it focuses on employee number 427. So this is a sequel... This is... To a classic, or is it a reboot? This, is it a... This is a remake of a remake. Right, okay. So, back in 2011, there was a, a source mod, which is to say a mod for the engine used by Half-Life. Right. That was called the Stanley Parable, mm -hmm. and that was relatively small. And then, two years later, they made an even bigger version... That was a standalone game. Right. Still on the Source engine, but not a Source mod. And this year, they have finally, finally, after three years, after they initially announced it was going to be out, mm -hmm. uh, they have finally finished uh, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, which is the same as the previous remake, but with apparently over twice as much content in it. So, <laughs> so the same but different. Yeah. Uh, now, Portal was Portal based was on... on Source, yes. Right, okay. Um, and the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is not Source, it's Unity, because apparently they wanted to do m more things. Source does a lot of things very well, and other things not so well. Right. <laughs> Speaking of games, mm -hmm. I've been playing some myself. You have? Which is a bit odd and strange for me. 
I had recommended to me, well, not not me personally, but a, a, a person I follow recommended it in a podcast, and that was Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, mm-hmm. which is quite a short game. And I'm not a gamer in any way, shape or form, so this was a bit of a branch out for me, but got through that mm-hmm. with enough of a challenge to me to frustrate me but also at a level where I kept going. Um, so I, I think it was quite well balanced in, in that regard. So well worth a look. And I've also been playing Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which has actually also had a spruce up, but I, I bought it with both versions of it and started playing the spruced up version. Um, yeah, that, that again is, is sort of a, a first person wander around, solve puzzles, and, and get scared and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. It is quite a lot darker than Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Um, and and also, I found with Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, it, it was very much uh, a railroaded game where you you had some flexibility of, of direction, but ultimately, that's where you're going, that's mm-hmm. where you go. Um and Vanishing of Ethan Carter is, in a lot of ways, a lot freer, but is also, uh, if you don't check every single corner of every single gully and, and rooms, and you've got to look absolutely everywhere for clues. And sometimes the world is so big that it's really easy to miss things. And, and then you've got to, you, you get stumped and there, there's no hand holding whatsoever. So, I don't know, I, I have resorted to sort of hints and things like that and I, I'm at a stage where I'm way, way, way uh, into the game and have just found out that uh, I've missed some storytelling way, way back at the beginning. Oh. Uh, so, it, and I don't think it's entirely necessary to have seen it, but it does make it frustrating that... I want to see it all. You, you know, I, it, it's not important to progress, but it would help to make the story make a lot more sense. It's very much a case of you find this, you find this, you find this, you find this, and bling, there's some um, exposition that tells you what's going on. And so having missed it right from the start, I've been ill-informed as to what the heck is going on. And... It's already enough of a story of what the heck is going on that that just, yeah, it's a little, little frustrating. And some of the puzzles are just frustrating rather than clever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. thanks for joining us on our game review. It looks absolutely incredibly deep and lush and it's very atmospheric, but, yeah, it, it, it's clunky in places as far as... Mm getting you to progress and, and knowing what, what to, you know, I don't expect full hand-holding, but when you've got to look behind every rock and th- things like that, uh, and <laughs> way, 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 way up there, there's an important bit of something, and if you happen to go around the wrong tree, you miss it entirely. Mm. It, yeah, doesn't I- I I had a a similar experience recently with a game called Infra, which is sort of a game where you crawl about the crumbling infrastructure of a city Mm -hmm. somewhere in Europe, somewhere. Yeah. It's a fictional city. So in order to get a good ending, you have to use a camera to take a picture of at least half of the photographable items, and some of them are particularly obtuse, or you have to take the photos while you are also navigating a raft down a canal. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. And I used a walkthrough, because some of the puzzles were just... (laughs) Yeah. Why, why am I going back and forth here? So if you're telling a narrative in a game, I think it's really weak to make something so obtuse that you end up having to use a walkthrough to have the story told to you. <laughs> what was the game with the fire tower? Um, uh, Firewatch. Firewatch. Absolutely amazing, I thought, mm. in that not a lot of hand-holding... Mm-hmm. But it still sort of 
directed you you you, 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 you know what your objective is. yeah yeah and never had to touch a walkthrough for that that being said after completing it the first time round, I wanted to go through it again and did have a look at a walkthrough. And there were some little things that I didn't pick up on, but the narrative was still strong enough mm. in that first playthrough that I got a, a satisfactory mm. story. I moved through the story. And that, that was also the case with Edith Finch. What's mm. um, uh, What remains of, what Edith, remains Finch. of Edith Finch? Again, there were things that I did miss the first time through, but it was in such a way that you had to find the main things in a certain spot to progress through to the next Mm. spot. So you, you knew that you weren't missing major things because it was allowing you to progress. So that's our interactive media podcast. Yeah, I, I really do like the genre of interactive storytelling um, mm. and the idea of multiple endings. You, you know, going back to, uh, you know, I was around when they, they put out the first Choose Your Own Adventure books. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Choose Your Own Adventure TM yes. books. Um, and, yeah, it, it was it was a wonderful era and a wonderful... Uh, to to me at least, uh, and to all my friends, uh, a new concept and and having games that follow on very soon after them, um, yeah, it was, it was good. I, I like the idea of making choices and and and, and progressing and having the the narrative progress, but also enjoy the the feeling of uh, an open world, mm. and, and even though the graphics in Firewatch were quite stylized, simplistic. Mm -hmm. It was still beautiful and and it still felt like you were in the middle of a very, very, very large open world. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Gee, that was a digression, wasn't it? Yeah. I think I'm putting off watching a computer game. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that what we're about to watch? No, no, that's that's the third film. Oh, sorry. You're right. Game over. Mm. Um. (laughs) That is 3D. Game over. Game over. Yes. What are we watching today? We are watching the film Spy Kids. Which which are the... uh, I want to say the first foray by Robert Rodriguez into family film. I believe it is indeed. His first foray, but he dragged in a whole heap of favours to to do so from Mm -hmm. uh, previous works. And uh, so there's, there's actually some big names uh, of people who, I guess, jumped on board and helped. What is this film that we are watching? We are watching Spy Kids. Did I already ask that? I, I did can't... already ask it. Did you answer it? I can't remember. I can't either. No. I'm feeling a bit hyped at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know why, because I was completely dreading uh, this this whole thing. I do have a plot synopsis. I have exactly you. the same plot synopsis Good. in front of me. Good, because it's actually a reasonable one. Mm. Thomas, would you please tell our dear listener what Spy Kids is all about? Carmen and Junie think their parents are boring. Little do they know that in their day, Gregorio and Ingrid Cortez were the top secret agents from their respective countries. They gave up that life to raise their children. Now, the disappearances of several of their old colleagues forces the Cortez's return from retirement. What they didn't count on was Carmen and Junie joining the family business. It sounds crazy. It is a bit. (laughs) It's been many years since I've seen this. Um, I seem to recall quite enjoying it. Actually, I I seem to recall quite enjoying sharing it with uh, the target audience basically, Mm -hmm. which I guess is suggesting that it's got a lot going for it in that I could bear watching it, but also having its target audience, I think, enjoying it. But that all remains to be seen on a reviewing Mm. as we're about to watch. There is no disc. It's still on the shelf because we're going to stream it via 500 different streaming services. (laughs) I think we'll half we'll, of which we're subscribed to. Yes. Um so we're going to press some buttons. We're going to watch Spy Kids. We'll come back talk about it. So we'll catch you on the digital flip side. That's that's still film free. You you're still talking about film free. This is film 1. Why are you saying what? 
the the the, di- the <laughs> no, digital, no, it's digital flip side. in that we're streaming it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You're mongrel. Great. Yep. Turn turn to side B, I guess. No, you can't. It's it's a stream. There are no signs. Open open file two. <laughs> <laughs> you dag. <laughs> So, <laughs> no. What did no, you think? No, 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 hey. no, no. <laughs> you, you'd been planning that all along, hadn't you? No, I haven't. Uh. But but it seems seems more appropriate for me to be asking the question. To be honest, I had way too much fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh. and it's interesting. And I don't want to get deeply philosophical about this piece of fluff. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it suddenly dawned on me, uh, probably about a third of the way through, uh-huh. HR Puffin stuff. Uh-huh. Saturday morning show that I grew up with, I'm showing my age again, that was just absolutely crazy bonkers. But it just drew you in. You had to keep watching mm-hmm. it. And no matter how crazy it got... You wanted a result, even though you knew that it was going to work out, as it always did. The, the, the good people win. The bad people didn't win, but survived and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. and lived to, to face a, another episode type of thing. And I realized, that's what this is. This is like HR Puffin stuff for the kids of, I was going to say today, but it, it's... Of 2001. 2001. And... Then I thought, and it, and it's also very pantomime-ish, um, mm-hmm. which was also something that I just absolutely, you know, <laughs> you hiss the villains and you you call out, look behind you, and it was just so full of that. And the other feature of the pantomimes is dragging in fairly big names mm-hmm. <laughs> to just ham it up, which is what this is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a it's a HR puff and stuff pantomime cross. Then to to further put an extra deep layer onto that was the fact that there was the line in it uh, that says, you want to see your mum and dad again, you'll be able to see them every Saturday morning (laughs) between 7.30 and 8, (laughs) Um, which was what HR Pup and stuff was. (laughs) Um, uh, It it really... you, You... have to go in fully expecting to watch it through kids' eyes. Mm -hmm. And yet it was made in such a way that uh, the kids of 2001 would get a romp out of it. Mm -hmm. And the parents who grew up on HR HR Puff and Stuff should, if they get their HR Puff and Stuff mindset firmly in place, um, just have a romp with it as well. It is dumb. It is yeah. silly. It is, and yet you've got to love it. <laughs> I, yeah. I think, um, and I think that is very much made possible by the fact that the actors aren't phoning in their lines. No, the kids were cast absolutely perfectly. They were acting their age, mm-hmm. and were never so precocious that they got aggravating. They were having a good time. Mm-hmm. The adults were having a good time, but they were really taking it seriously whilst having a good time. Mm-hmm. And Rodriguez certainly dragged in those those big names for, for small moments, and I get the impression that it was a case of do your bit... In front of a green screen, these are all your lines. And when you're filming your your big film that you're making right now, just in, in a half hour, just go off yeah. set and, and do, do, do that. Yeah, I can do that. Sure. It, it just really felt like it, it was, yeah, I'll do you a favour. I'll do you a favour. <laughs> and then he made two more films with the same people. Yeah, and, and other big names, um, which again uh, reminds me of the pantomime big names that would just make fun of themselves and they obviously have a a good time of it i still think from recollection this is possibly the funnest 
of them. They get more complicated, I think, the further mm. further through they go. But even still... Uh, yeah, the, the next two are still good. Yeah, yeah. And then things go awry a bit, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you happen to have on hand the, the budget for... Budget, $35 million, and it made almost $150 that, million. That... <laughs> Uh, just looking at the names uh, I- involved, it definitely had to have been calling in favours and, and, and people wanting to be involved in this silly bit of fun. It's amazing, going back to this some years after I last watched it and and noticing new things or realising things that I was too young before to get, Yep, like realising our grand plan syndication (laughs) like knowing what syndication is yeah yeah yes there there are some very very adult lines in it nothing too risque or or anything like that um but but enough lines for the adults to to get a giggle out if their mindset is in that spot Mm -hmm. that the kids will not get one thing that i had never noticed before is Carmen drops into the Fum Fums area and behind her there are a bunch of family photos of Fum Fums. <laughs> I was wondering what you were laughing at. I, I wasn't quick enough to, to pick that before they, they the camera moved away. Okay, so there were, there were family <laughs> pics of the, the Thumb Thumbs, which are amazing characters. Mm, for just being some fums. Yes. For those who have not seen the, the film, these uh, human size figures with a head that's a thumb, the arms are thumbs, mm-hmm. and the legs are thumbs. So it, they're all thumbs. Yep. And they play on the fact of being all thumbs. The film, as it turns out, is very, very Burton esque in its, <laughs> its, its design. Yep, yep. And also very Burton-esque in its music, music. because uh, a good portion of it is Danny, Danny Elfman. Elfman. Yep, again, I can imagine the phone call. Danny, Rob, can you, can and, you uh, do me a favour? Yeah. And, <laughs> I need a funny, ditty little, you know, a Danny Elfman ditty song yeah. or two. And maybe a bit of music. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> which which is very fitting with the, the floop. Mm. Yep. Scenes. Yep. And obviously, being a Robert Rodriguez film, he also put in some music himself and put himself into all sorts of other roles. And I don't think it gets quite to the same heights of ridiculous CGI as some of his later work. No. It is certainly more grounded than Mm. they push the limits much, much more in the other two. Uh, to the point of overstepping, I think. Mm. I mean, that that being said, there was a great deal of variability in this oh, yes. film of, of <laughs> effects. There was green screen and there was green screen, and it varied quite a bit. But that whole Saturday morning fun show feel, you, you, mm. if you, you just have to run with it. Other things mm. that I had not noticed or should have noticed... <laughs> Uh, or, or or don't remember noticing. Yeah. Because <laughs> there, there was one there that, that I, I certainly had a chuckle over. That Je- Jeannie and Carmen stroll out of this clothing store and get on the streetcar. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just this they're, random they're, couple. They're, they're being chased. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. so they've done a quick change of clothes, run out. Got on the streetcar. And cuddle up with a random couple <laughs> on the streetcar to blend in. Yeah, <laughs> they just quickly adopted this this couple. I, who <laughs> have, have we have we not learned something just now about stranger danger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the how about we try this? Oh, I think it may be too late. And they press the button. <laughs> too, too late. Too late. <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> All the screens come up with too late. <laughs> It, it was just a bonkers fun romp. Mm. Machete. Yes. Played by Danny Trejo. Yes. An alternative version of that character would go on to take a role in a bunch of 
other Robert, Robert Rodriguez, Rodriguez films. After a fake machete trailer appeared in the Rodriguez Tarantino team up uh, Grindhouse. Mm hmm. And uh, he went on to also use him in The Book of Boba Fett. Right, which which I've not seen, but oh, okay. don't, right. don't care for spoilers about whatever. Right, okay. <laughs> I, I've heard <laughs> it's, not, it's not great. I really, really don't like it. No. Yes, we're, we're, we're going off a, on a, a side tangent, but no. No, I could well do without. It had so, so, so much potential... And it was just wasted. So that's our Star Wars review. That is our Star Wars review. For, Do you have year. anything else you wish to mention about Spy Kids in your list of... You can see I took huge amounts of notes. <laughs> Rising from the ground in front oh, of me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he should be able to see you. He's, yes. he's looking in your direction this whole time. And yep. you still get <laughs> up. <laughs> Suddenly his foes appear before him from down on the ground. <laughs> uh, In some ways, it's it's not a good film. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it, it doesn't deserve us to have such a big grin on our face. No, but critically it did reasonably well. Yeah. And... Sure, IMDb is a little down on it, but they're all a bunch of spoil sports over there, so... Uh, and target audience-wise, it just nailed it. Mm. Absolutely nailed it. That particular movie played so often in our house as the kids it did. grew up. <laughs> uh, and there was no worries about it. The only bit of language in it is, is, is covered up immediately. Absolutely brilliant... <laughs> Do I spoil it? A, a 2001 film? I don't know, that's uh, up to you. Um, Carmen and Junie are confronted by their robot selves suddenly. and, and, mm. uh, and Carmen quote-unquote scares them and they run off. Yep. And do a flip and turn around. And they realise they're in big, big trouble and Carmen says, shit, tarky mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> And it, that's it, as far as yeah. the, the language was concerned. Um, and and I believe that does come up again in each of the following films. Fair enough. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a good line. It is. Yep. yep. Uh, oh, good fun. Yeah. Good fun. I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> We've just spent our time... Gushing. For a film that, <laughs> on paper, just does not deserve the gushing. But no. Perhaps in, in with the world in the state that it's in and the political climate, that's exactly what we needed right now. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I was dreading. I was really dreading <laughs> watching yeah. that. You were worried <laughs> that it wasn't going to be good. No, exactly. Um, it was funny. Brianna walked in and, and sort of was incredulous that that's what we were watching and then sat down and proceeded to watch it. Uh, she stayed through to the end, didn't she? Yeah. 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 I don't know if she felt the same way but, as us at the end of it. Oh, no, but but, but it, it kept her. Yeah. I was expecting her to last five minutes with that look of incredulousness <laughs> on her face, but no, and, she, she stuck and, with it. And there are some things in this film deserving of incredulity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a silly, silly film. Yeah. All right. The, the incredulity is the point. Absolutely. All right. Well, we might move on then. The following segment has no title. We apologise for the inconvenience. I do have one thing. Mm. Yep. Yep. Dunkle wrote in. Dunkle did. Do you have Dunkle's guess? As to what last week's uh, episode was, can you bring that up? I'm going to bring that up we'll now. See how close she was. Uh, so last week, uh, we watched "Raise the Titanic." Yep. And her guess was Rustiton. R S T I T N. Fair enough. Uh, which I am led to believe was not what was written no, down. No, no. I'm very, very much spur of the moment, and it was just a raise tea. 
Mm. So, good guess, but no $20,000 sent no. in. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, um, but Dunkel, <laughs> unfortunately, you do not get the contents of the safe house's currency drawer. That's right. <laughs> all, uh, all, all ten currencies. I'm I'm quite sure there was another couple of layers. Oh, yeah. Under yeah, yeah, there, yeah. so there was more than ten currencies, but uh, definitely not all the world's not currencies. not all the world's currencies. No, Dunkel, uh, please, I, I do enjoy your uh, guesses. Today's is possibly a tricky one. I'll give you a hint. It may not be the most obvious. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for giving us engagement on our YouTube channel. Absolutely, (laughs) (laughs) which is definitely the least pursued option of our listeners. Uh, Speaking of people pursuing options of uh, giving input, was there anything else? Helen wrote in on the episode on source code, which was a notably short episode. Right. And that's basically how the comment goes. Uh-huh. Good, you, good. Uh, she she is walking again. Yes. And so back then wouldn't have been a problem. But she is walking again now, and it was too short again. Oh, dear. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think this is going to be a fairly short episode, too. But that's the way it is. Yeah. Which is surprising, because we talked a lot. We did. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're good. Yeah. We're good. All right. Uh, anything else? No, there's nothing else. Okay, then. We shall move on, then. Pick a film for next week so we can go to bed. It's your turn. It is my turn, and I have picked something. Oh. Mm. You have made a selection. I have made a selection. I've even made a purchase to make the selection. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Uh, you will recall. So, yes. A while back. hmm A few episodes back that we watched a movie with River Phoenix in it. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch another River Phoenix film. I figured we might be. Mm, Yes. Okay. Oh, Oh, hold on. (laughs) (laughs) My thing just synchronised. Yes. Now now there's two options. Now there's two options. Mm, Which way is it going to fall? (laughs) You're not meant to look that up. (sighs) So I know I know two films that you have purchased that it definitely won't be. <laughs> okay. Uh, this film is directed by Richard Benjamin. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's was, not on the front cover of either of these options. The, the, uh, the studios were Columbia Pictures, Sony Pictures, Home Entertainment. Uh-huh, so... So you know which so one it is? Sony. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read does, the plot. Does it have old style classification or new style classification? Oh, look. I think both of them will. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> oh. I'm going to read the plot. Okay. Okay. Sydney Point here. Okay. <laughs> Buzz. And, <laughs> and River Phoenix headline the cast of this top notch thriller of espionage and patriotism from director Richard Benjamin. A gripping story for fans of films like No Way Out and The Bourne Identity. I've seen one of those. (laughs) So have I. Uh, It tells of a clean-cut, all-American boy who is shocked to be told that his parents are actually Russian spies, sleeper agents awaiting the call to action. Now, faced with choosing between the love of his parents and love of his country, his survival will depend on who gets to him first, the FBI or the KGB. Right. Yes. So you think you know what we're watching? Yeah, we are watching another spy film that is also about family. It is, and made in, I think, the same year. Yes, 1988 is the same year as 2001. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I, I see what you mean. I, yeah. I thought you were talking about the... No, which wasn't about spies at all. No. No. Okay, this no, is going it, well. It, it this was is about... going hideously wrong. <laughs> no, the other film was about domestic terrorism. It was. <laughs> we're watching Little Nikita next week. Mm-hmm. We hope that you can join us. Yep. <laughs> uh, but until then, we'll catch you next time. Bye. 
You have been listening to Cellulose Free. Your hosts were Colin, who produces and edits the show, and Thomas, who makes the artwork and music. Cellulose Free is recorded in the Deranged Cat Studios in scenic Tasmania, Australia. We keep track of our extensive physical media collection through My Movies, which we highly recommend. You can find links to that, as well as other places you can find us in the show notes. Cellulose Free is a high hello production. Now faced and now faced and choosing between the love of his parents and love of his country. Oh, now faced with choosing.